Hi friends, it's Lauren Taylor. Thanks for joining me in my craft room today. I'm grateful to have you here for a Fandom Friday video. Today is also a new release from Kindred Stamps where they sell amazing fandom stamps. And this month I was gifted the murder mystery stamp set to create some projects for you um, just so you could see how to use these images just some inspiration with the stamp set so I'm jumping right into coloring because this video is a very long video I'm going to focus mostly on my coloring for this video and then three a little bit more on the simple side projects featuring the characters that I'm coloring in today. You can see the caps on screen. So if you also use Olo markers, you can see what I'm using. I'm going to show the different skin tone variations. Now everyone in this particular movie um, is very pale. So I'm just going to show a few different ways you can color more Caucasian looking folks. Um, but yes, I'm going to just jump around between the characters. I'm going to start with the skin tone. I'm going to move into the hair and then I'm going to uh, move on to their weapons and then their outfits. So I wanted to show how I colored in the characters with glasses. I just use the lightest color that I'm using to blend in all of the skin tones to fill in the glasses. So it gives a little bit of a look like there's glass there. It's a, some type of change in the color for where the glasses are. My coloring is also sped up to two times the speed because I am not this fast at coloring. I also, like I said, this video is going to be a long one and I didn't want to keep you here for hours. So while my original videos were over two hours long, I was able to kind of edit and speed up to get this down to about a half an hour. If you don't want to watch the coloring, like you don't have a low markers or you don't really care to see how I color, I won't be offended. <laughs> you can use the chapters in my description box to um, move on to the next section. You don't have to sit here and watch me color if you don't like to, but I do appreciate the views. So um, thank you so much for watching today's Fandom Friday video. So while I'm coloring, I thought we'd do a little old school color and chat like I used to do. Um, if you have any questions about my coloring, I'm not going to say the colors. I might add in some, you know, tidbits here and there as I color. But um, if you have any questions, just drop a comment. I do my best to respond to all my comments. Um, you can also message me on Instagram if you want to have a bit more of a conversation about how I color. Uh, you can find that link down below in the description box. You can also head over to my Facebook group, the Make and Take Club, which is also linked down below. Uh, where you can even get more inspiration, see all the photos of my projects. Uh, so you can find that information again in the description box. So while I'm finishing up the skin tone coloring, let's just have a little check-in. Can you believe that we're approaching the end of September? October is going to be here before we know it. I am busy as always. My new job has been wonderful, but also just a lot to learn and a lot to do. Um, it's definitely kept me a lot busier than my old job, which is fine. It's good. I love the challenge. I like my job a lot. So it's been uh, really, really rewarding to um, have this different position uh, with, a with a new company to be able to make some good change in the industry that I'm in. So I'm really grateful for the experience, but it is definitely keeping me very busy. Girl Scouts are doing well. My troop is in the middle of selling fall products, so they're busy trying to make money for their troop, um, but mostly because they're finishing up their bronze award, which is really exciting. That's like the highest award a Girl Scout junior can earn, so they've been really busy working on that. I'm very proud of them. As far as the crafting, I've been a very busy bee. It was really fun doing some stamp timber sets. I, uh, of course, had Pretty Pink Posh, and I was so thrilled that Trinity Stamps gave me a set as well. So that was really fun. If you didn't see those, um, you can find my Pretty Pink Posh, even though it is sold out on Instagram and Trinity Stamps because it was released on the 24th. 
I used that for my monthly Christmas video, even though it wasn't technically on the 25th, um, just because it was close enough. And of course, it was a Christmas set, so you can check out that as well. Other things I've been working on, I'm really excited that I'm a guest designer for Paper Tray Ink this month. We had a hop um, on the 26th, so if you could check that out on Instagram as well. I'm also going to work on a video and another you know, project or two, so you'll be seeing that over the next month as well. Next month, I'll also be a guest for another YouTube channel. I don't want to ruin the surprise, so you'll see that coming up next week. And also, I'm going to be doing a collaboration uh, video with another YouTuber for my birthday because it's next month. So I'm really excited for that. You'll see that on my birthday on the 8th. So make sure you're, you know, have that notifications on for my channel. I always feel so silly saying things like that, but that will keep you in the loop for when new videos are released. But jumping back to Kindred Stamps, the release today, there's lots of really great stamp sets and dies. There are some fandom sets and a few, um, or one stamp set that is a career day. So there's career day education. We also have a fandom set called Mother May I, which is inspired from an old kind of uh, scary uh, movie. I don't want to give away too much. <laughs> There's a science lab dies and the stamp set G's, which are inspired from a cartoon that a lot of adults like. There's also the screams come true stamp set, work monsters stamp set, and some coordinating dies. There's a canister album die and a door portal die which from the names hopefully gives you a you know an idea of what those uh, fandom sets and dies are based on um, and then of course there's the murder mystery set here now like I said when I started coloring I'm basing these on the movie I absolutely love well let me say I was so excited that I got picked to do this uh, set because I love the board game that this movie is based on so much. Um, it is like my dream to have this board game in every type of variation possible, um, even in like theme. Like I have probably, I'm trying to think, maybe like seven or eight versions of this game just with different uh, themes, like different TV shows or movies or um theme park rides. I just love this game. <laughs> like I joke with my family that I would love to have a game room, but it's all this game, just different versions of it, <laughs> which is like not fun at all. Um, but that's how much I love this board game. And I love this movie. Um, my dad introduced me to it when I was younger and I just love the silliness of it. All the actors in this movie are so great. I love that there's three different endings. Um, when my dad saw this movie when it was in theaters, he went and saw it a bunch of different times to be able to see if he could catch all the endings, which I think is so cool. Um, definitely a mystery and a fun little fact, I guess, about this movie. Uh, but I do own it. I mean, it is on DVD, which I never like to watch, but I have watched it uh, many times. It's, again, just so funny. It, I love the silliness of it all. I love the running around. Um, it's just so great. And I, I am a big fan of movies with these actors in it. Um, I guess I could say like Christopher Guest movies, right? Those kind of style mockumentaries. While this movie is not a mockumentary, it just has that same silly vibe. And I love that. So as you could see, my first character, if I was going in rainbow order, um, she is wearing such a beautiful green dress. So I wanted to make sure that I gave that, you know, vibe in her outfit and her shoes. She also has this really pretty like blue tulle um, shawl. And while this image isn't uh, showing the shawl, she does wear like the same color gloves. So I use that to color in her gloves, like a blue gray. And then I also use that to color in her earrings because she wears like silver earrings or diamond earrings. So I thought that blue gray would still give that vibe. So that's why I use that for her earrings as well. 
Moving on to my next colored character here. I did his suit in a brown, but he does wear a more um, yellowy brown, if you catch my wink through the screen. Uh, so I did use a yellow-orange color to cover the suit after I was done um, coloring it in brown because I wanted it to have that yellow tone. And then some dark brown shoes to match. And his tie was a little bit more kind of like off-white. So I used a light kind of gray-brown color to color in his tie. My next colored character here is um, in a navy blue suit and I kind of struggled with the Olo markers. I don't have the newest set. I need to save up to get those. Um, so I was trying to use the original set of colors. I don't know if there's a navy in the new set. I'm just saying that I just have the original set of colors. And um, yeah, there wasn't really like a good navy color that I wanted to use. So I used the blue black, which is really dark, <laughs> is very, very dark to outline and be the shadow. And then I used the darkest kind of navy blue I had to color that in. And while there is kind of a big jump between the two colors, I think I achieved that look of navy blue. And then he wears kind of a brown black shoe, so I wanted to use black but with a warmer tone, so I grabbed my more red black colors to color that in. Um, and then he has like a, a maroon tie, so use some reds to color in his tie. Now this next character, she is wild. <laughs> She's got so much color. She took me the longest to color and figure out. Uh, just because there was so much going on on her outfit. So I um, am going to use like orangey colors for her headpiece and for her skirt. It's going to be more like an orangey pink. And then her top is actually a really pretty shimmery blue. Like it has two tones to it the way that I'm not really good with fabric names, but the way that the fabric like hits the light, like the different angles, there's two different colors. It's like a purpley blue and then a pink, but I didn't know how to do that um, with alcohol markers. So I went with just the purpley blue for her top and then she wears a fur. So I'm going to bring in some uh, brown colors to color in the fur. And then she has a really cute little green purse. So I will use green for that. And then she wears um, some gold touches, so like the earrings, her shoes, while they are strappy, so you don't really need to color them, um, color them in, the heel has a little spot to color in, so I added the gold color on the heel, um, and then the details of her purse, so you can see here I'm doing the earrings, the heel, and then I'll remember to do the clasp on the purse. After her, I'm going to move on to the butler in the middle. He and my um, last female character both wear black, so I'm going to use some grays because I don't really like using um, black if I absolutely have to like I did for my uh, navy suit. But I'm going to use dark grays to color in their outfits and shoes. And then the last character holding the revolver. Um, I will walk through his colors as well. He's wearing like a gray suit and then a purpley um, fruit colored, <laughs> trying so hard not to say the names, uh, vest and then a bow tie, which was also very similar color to my mustache gentleman's tie. So I'll use the same colors for that. And I love that he has his pipe in his mouth. So I'll use some kind of like reddishy browns to color in that as well. So I also wanted to talk a little bit about Olo markers and how I've been enjoying them because I've been getting some questions on um, not only YouTube, but Instagram as well. And I do really like them. I think they're very easy to use. The only thing is I find that they can leak a little more often than oh hoo hoo, which is what I have a lot of. And you're going to see that happen here in just a minute, but I will recover, but I want to just show you that it does happen. Um, I don't know why that is. I, maybe it's because they use a liquid instead of a, um, like a piece of foam, like other markers use to maintain or hold the liquid in the marker. So um, you'll see right here, I'm gonna get a big old spot of that WG9. 
and it grows because <laughs> it keeps seeping into the paper. But it didn't really like affect my character too much. Now her sleeve's going to look crazy long when I'm done. Um, but I'm going to use a white jelly roll pen to recover. You'll see it later when I cut out my image. Um, so that was a bummer, but I do think it was, uh, I don't want to say solvable. That's the wrong word. Like I can figure it out. It, it, it'll work. Uh, but I don't know like why it does that every once in a while. I have a red that also likes to just leak on me. I might need to buy a new one or maybe replace the tip. I'm not really sure. I need to look into why that is. If you know, let me know in the comments how I can solve that or if that's just something that can happen with Olo markers. Now that's not common other than my red one. I forget which red it is. Um, that doesn't happen a lot. As you can see, I colored in all of these characters and I actually colored them in twice. I did all of this uh, a first time to figure out the colors before I started filming. Uh, and that only happened that one time. So it can happen. I've just had that experience, but it's not like it happens all the time. And it's not all my markers. It's just like one or two. So give me any tidbits on that. I could, I would really appreciate it, but I really do enjoy using them. I like the colors. I feel like they're very vibrant and beautiful. Um, and you can see here my two different ones, but yeah, let me know if you have any tips on how to deal with that or if it's just maybe I have a defective one and I need to just replace it. Um, but anyway. So I did take the darkest colors, uh, shades, uh, and add a little bit of stippling on their hair and their clothes just to give them some interest. I really like that look. You definitely don't need to do that. And my favorite thing to do right now is to re-stamp my images with Versifying Claire uh, or Versifying inks um, just to give them a bolder outline. I just love Versifying inks. I had a friend ask me what I loved about them. I think they just stamp like so cleanly. You don't need to, oh, sorry, pause. <laughs> Here you can see I used a white gel pen to color in the area between her arm and the rope to make it white again. And then I also just kind of like fussy cut on the inside of that area to even remove some of that uh, ink. And I think it looks really great. You can't tell that my ink like exploded on me. Um, but going back to what I was saying, VersaFine inks just stamp so nicely. You don't need like a misty if you're just stamping a sentiment. I've never had any issues with my um, stamps not stamping really well the first time. And I love that, like I said, for sentiments mostly because sometimes sentiments have really fine lines, like they're very thin letters. And so I find that VersaFine just really stamps so perfectly for those types of stamps. Um, and then I, like I said, they're very bold. So I like to stamp my images with an alcohol marker friendly ink. And then when I'm done coloring, I don't remove the stamps. I put it, the paper right back into the misty and stamp it again so I have that bold outline because they are not alcohol marker friendly inks. They are watercolor friendly, but not alcohol marker friendly. Okay, we're finally done coloring. <laughs> 18 and a half minutes in. Good Lord, I can't believe I thought of enough stuff to talk about. That was always my worry about being on YouTube is what do I talk about for that long? So I'm gonna jump into the first card. I'm putting together the Kindred box card die. Um, I'm going to kind of just jump through it because like I said, I, we've already been here for almost 19 minutes and, um, this box card is very similar to other box card videos I have. If you have any questions about this die, just let me know if you'd like to see a video where I actually walk through how to put it together. Uh, let me know in the comments too, and I will make sure that I don't take up 20 minutes of coloring time for that video and I'll show more of the steps of putting together the box card. But I do have a box card playlist, um, not always you know, the same brand box card, but um, other brands as well. So you can see different ideas of using different companies of box cards by checking out my playlists. So I was going to use some of the spooky hotel paper for my box card, but I was inspired by the board game itself. One of my <laughs> versions of this board game is just a classic wooden box with a green 
um, detail like cover on it. So I thought I would use that as inspiration for my box card. And so I did the base of the box card out of some craft card stock. This is Desert Storm Nina card stock. And then I grabbed a green card stock for my stash and I cut out all of the detail dies from it. I also die cut the detail, like the backing of the box card, the largest die out of some white. And I'm going to put that on the back because I'm going to do one of my characters on the back as well as more of my sentiment. So I'm going to stamp my sentiment on the front, which I should have done before I glued that green panel down, but it will work out. <laughs> And so I actually use a picture from the movie, one of the iconic pictures where they're all standing in a line, like in a row. And so while I can't put them all in a row on this box card, I'm going to use that as my inspiration of how I layer them onto the different areas of the box card. So I have two females on my first inside shelf and I have two of the males on the second inside shelf. And I just glued at it like with liquid adhesive, added glue to their feet and legs and put them onto the box card. For my last gentleman, I put him in the back with some foam. So just so he's, you know, a little bit popped up off the back. It's one millimeter foam. It's not very thick. And then uh, my last female is going to go on the front, but I thought, let me do my stamping first. So I'm going to stamp my sentiments that are going to go on the back. I did, it would be a true crime not to wish you a happy birthday and then get a clue up a little bit higher because it's going to go right next to my butler. So I'm just going to glue my butler down with liquid adhesive because I don't want any dimension on the back of the card. So I'll go ahead and get this panel adhered first, and then I'll use my liquid glue to attach my butler. Now I know it looks weird how I'm adding my adhesive. It's because I just stamped the VersaFine and all the VersaFine inks, including the Claire's, they stay a little tiny like wet. They don't dry right away, um, which makes it great for embossing. Another reason to love VersaFine inks is you can emboss with them. So I use all the different colors and clear embossing powder a lot uh, because you can you know, have all the colors if you use an ink and clear. Uh, so I just want, didn't want to smear my sentiments while I was adding the adhesive. So I was trying my best not to drag my paper on my glass board. So I got that sentiment added to the back and then I glued on my butler and now I'm going to remember that I wanted to stamp a sentiment but emboss it on the front. So we're going to be daring, which, you know, it's how I roll sometimes. And I use an anti-static powder before stamping my sentiment in a clear embossing ink. Um, Kindred does have an embossing ink. I just forgot to grab it. I like to use, you know, brands things together, but I was deep in thought and just grab the nearest embossing ink I had. Uh, so this one is Bruce Monroe and I'm using a detailed white embossing powder to go ahead and add that sentiment. So it's really cute. It says it was you in the kitchen with the cake. So it's a great birthday card. Once the embossing powder cools down, I'll go ahead and use an anti-static cloth to remove some of that powder. And I'm so sorry I'm crooked here. I I realize what is happening because my camera will rotate on me. And I'm like, how how is that possible? It's because my heat gun is next to my camera stand. And so when I pull out my heat gun, it like pulls the camera stand. So it like slowly rotates and it's really annoying. So I'm so sorry. I'm going to fix it here in just a minute. Um, but after I finished my sentiment and wiped away the excess powder. I went ahead and glued my last female down and there she is in the front. It's so cute. I love them all stacked together. I think this is my favorite of the three cards. It's just so fun. I love all the different characters. And then later on, I did add some white gel pen highlights to my characters as well. Jumping into the second card, I found some colored cardstock in my stash that matched each of the game pieces from the board game, uh, at least I thought matched the best, and I used a circle die to cut out six circles. This particular circle die is from the Zany Virtual Retreat. This was one of the dies from that um, retreat kit, but obviously you can use any circle circle die that you have in your stash. And in order to get all six of these circles and characters onto one card, how I envisioned making this card, 
I had to make a five by seven card because it's there's a lot going on. So I'm going to layer the six circles onto this piece of craft card stock. Now I did trim it slightly smaller than five by seven. It's four and three quarters by six and three quarters. So I have a bit of a white border, which looking back, maybe I should have just done five by seven because my circles didn't fit either <laughs> on this. So they overlap a little, but I had some fun kind of creating like a circle with the way that they overlap. And I'm not going to do any measurements. We're going to just wing it here and use our, you know, eye and the grid as much as possible to get these circles added. So I'm going to add my top left one and I'm doing my best to leave an equal amount of space on the top and the left side of it. I'll add adhesive to the yellow piece and I'm doing my best to get that again same distance from the top and to the right. I'll move on to the bottom two pieces and make sure that again I'm getting the same distance from the bottom like the edge of the craft on the right hand side and then for the bottom left one I'll do the same from the bottom and left side. And then the two middle pieces, I'm just going to line them up with the rest of the circles and try to keep that same distance to the edge of the cardstock. So for this first one on the left and for the last circle on the right. And I think I did a pretty good job. They look pretty fun. I again wanted them to look like the game pieces from the board game while the characters don't actually dress in the colors in the movie that they are associated with. Um, I still wanted to bring in some of that fun from the board game. So here I am deciding if I wanted it to be in portrait or landscape, but I'm going with my original thought and having it in portrait. I cut a card base down from a sheet of eight and a half by 11 card stock. I trimmed it to be seven by 10 and then I folded it in half so it would be five by seven. So seven by five, I guess if I stick with my original <laughs> uh, ratio. I'm using some strong adhesive to attach this card front to the card base and that's really going to be the majority of the card is just these pieces. I'm going to stamp my sentiment on the inside of the card for this one. So I'm going to take all six of my characters and I'm going to use some one millimeter foam adhesive and I know I put my first character in the wrong spot. I'll, I'll figure it out right about... Uh, one more character to go here. Um, so I'm going to add some foam adhesive on the back of all of these uh, one millimeter foam. So it's not too bulky. I just wanted them to pop up off the card a bit. And um, here I am going to grab my sentiment, but I was thinking about adding it to the front somehow, but I'm going to stamp it on the inside. So once I get all the foam adhesive on the back of my characters, I'll start um, gluing them down to the card or adhering them down to the card. So I'm just going to kind of jump through because you don't need to see me add foam adhesive <laughs> to each of my characters. So I'm starting with the top left and I'm going to have her go a little bit higher off the circle so that way they all will line up evenly with each other and they won't have to overlap too much. Forgive my messy hair there. Um, and then I did my character, um, the yellow one, and then I'm moving on to the middle one. So you can see they're a little more centered to their circles because the top characters are a little higher. And then the two characters on the bottom are going to be a little bit lower. And that's, like I said, just so they don't overlap um, like the actual characters. For my last uh, person here, I did use a liquid adhesive on the very end of the rope because I didn't want it to get ripped or torn anyway, nor did I want to try to um, put any foam adhesive behind that tiny little piece. I added some white gel pen highlights to the characters on the front as well, and I'm going to go ahead and just freehand stamp using my VersaFine black ink. Like I said, I love this ink. Um, I did get the new colors. They should be here soon. I'm so excited. But anyway, here is a close-up look at how this five by seven card turned out. I love that you can see all the characters. So all that hard work into my coloring, you can uh, definitely admire it on this card. For my last card, I'm keeping things simple for my butler. I'm going to grab my card basics dies. I absolutely love this die set from Kindred Stamps. It's a must. There's um, rectangle, circle, square, stars, a ticket. There's so many great like basic die uh, cutouts in that set. You should definitely have it in your stash. I use the rectangle, which nests perfectly on an A2 card to cut out some of that spooky hotel paper that I picked out earlier. I did the black and white stripe because 
because the butler has like a pinstripe pant. And while I didn't go into that much detail when coloring him in, I wanted to add the pinstripes to the card. So I love that this is my background. I die cut a piece of white cardstock with the detailed circle. So the little, um, uh, dashed and dot lines that the dies put in. That is my white cardstock piece. And then I use the solid circle to cut out another sheet of the spooky hotel paper pack, which has a really pretty, makes me think of wallpaper, like a wallpaper design. And um, so I'm going like leaning really into that black and white to match how this butler is dressed and using that same one millimeter foam adhesive to attach him to the center of those circles. For the circles, I used, um, it's not quite two millimeters thick. I think it's like one and a half um, foam adhesive. So there's a little bit of dimension, but the card won't be too thick because of the uh, thickness of the foam adhesive that I used. I went ahead and just stamped my sentiment using that same VersaFine black ink like I did for my second card. And this one says, I'd help you hide the body, which I think is so funny. And I'm using my little trimmer here just to trim a rectangle around that sentiment. I don't have the measurements. I just uh, made it look as even as possible so that the sentiment was centered on the rectangle. And I thought about layering it with black card stock, but I just put it, went ahead and attached it to the card. I'm keeping it simple because I've already been here for 30 minutes. <laughs> but here's a close up look of this final card. I love that it has a very classic, elegant uh, vibe to it, which I think matches a butler. So here is a final look at all of my cards. I've got my box card with my six characters on the front and my butler on the back as well as the sentiment. I love the, it was you in the kitchen with the cake. I think that's so funny. Here's my five by seven card where I can admire my coloring. And then I have the sentiment, thanks for being my partner in crime on the inside. I absolutely love that. I think it's a perfect sentiment for this set. And then finally, I'd help you hide the body with the butler. Again, a very simple layout but um, very fun characters. I hope you like this Phantom Friday video and that you check out the new release from Kindred Stamps. Let me know which card is your favorite. Again, did you have a favorite board game? Tell me what it is in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll click like, and if you're new here, I hope you'll subscribe and come back. As always, you can find everything I use down below in the description box. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Bye.